Hi crafty friends, it's Donna here with a pair of cards to share with you. For those of you that don't know me, I'm an Australian living in Tokyo for just another 10 days before moving back to Australia for an extended period. Given all the packing I'm doing, I think a cup of tea is in order for this card. I'm going to be using the lovely Florals Magnolia stamp from Paper Rose Studio. And what I want to do first is to create a background watercolour panel. Because the stamp is made up of flowers and leaves, I'm putting down a mix of pinks and greens here. And then, as long as I don't move the paper around too much and mix them up to make brown, I should be okay. I'm spritzing this with a bunch of clean water before laying my paper down. I'm going to move it just a little to fill in some of the gaps where there wasn't any ink on my background. Even so, I got a little bit of smudging and I've just wiped off anything that looked too brown with a paper towel. I'm going to dry this first layer and then mop up anything that looks too brown on my mat and pop in again in a few white spaces and also to add a little bit of layering and extra depth. The paint on my mat had got a little bit dry and so you'll notice it's fairly polka dotty at this stage so I'm just popping in while it's still wet with some water and then that will move around nicely on the page. One more dry with my hit tool and then the panel is done. Next job is to get some images down onto this page. I'm using my MISTI so that I can go backwards and forwards if I don't get it right the first time. I won't have too many chances on this panel. And the ink that I've chosen is a slow drying pigment ink. In this case it's Versafine Onyx Black. And the reason I've chosen this ink is that it will stay wet long enough for me to put some clear embossing powder on it and heat emboss that. That way I'll have a nice, really bold, raised black line. The paper's fairly busy, and so the line needs to be pretty bold to stand out. I know lots of people with very fancy ways of getting their embossing powder onto their paper, but I always seem to find a little scrap tag or sliver of paper lying around, and I use that. There's never a shortage of scraps in my craft room. I'm too lazy to wash the stamp between stampings and so I've just laid a piece of old packaging down there to protect my surface while I work out where the stamps go for the second half and then it's just a matter of repeating the process. This stamp has matching dies and I'm going to use those to cut out all the magnolias. I've realised about now that I've got enough magnolias for two separate cards and then to put them all on one card will make for a very, very busy card. So I'm going to make two different backgrounds. This first background uses the same twisted citron ink that I used for the flowers and I've just ink blended a little bit of that onto some regular paper. I'm spattering it with water but being careful not to use too much because this isn't watercolour paper. And finally, just a little spatter of the same Twisted Citron ink for a little bit more interest.
Then I'm going to cut the panel with the Stitched Rectangles USA die. Because the paper that I have left in my cupboards at the moment before the move is all USA sized. For the second background I'm going to use this basket weave pattern stencil from Paper Rose Studio. I'm going to tape that down on the back. I have some deco foil gold metallic paste which unfortunately is no longer available but there are lots of different gold and other coloured pastes on the market. And then I'm using a little spatula to spread that all over the card. Once I've got a good coverage I'll scrape off the excess and carefully scrape that back into my little jar so that I can use it again next time. Then it's simply a matter of carefully peeling up the stencil and washing it and my board and the palette knife all as quickly as I can before all the paste dries on them. I ended up with a couple of little imperfections where I was a little bit impatient and I smudged that. And so what I've done is I've cut the panel down, laid it on some black paper and cut a very thin black border. That way the only bits that are left are nice and tidy. Once again I'm using press and seal to hold my arrangements together so that I, once I've made my arrangement once I don't have to keep fiddling and making it again. The way that I attach this is to use the press and seal like a hinge, fold it back, add some glue to my back pieces, then fold it up again and add either tape or glue to the next layer working from the back to the front. The sentiments for today's card come from the black and white sentiment set, also from Paper Rose. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. It's a quick one considering that I've made two cards here, but I hope that the processes are all clear enough in the way that I've cut the video. If you'd like to stick around for some more, please press the subscribe button and you'll find out what's happening next. Otherwise, I'll see you when you next pop in for a visit. Stay safe everybody.